Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I am so happy to have you here today and before we get started, be sure that you are subscribed here that way you don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content we have. In today's video, we are going to be using Creative Fabrica to make a fun addition to this cute doormat. We're going to use some fonts to make this and it's really fun, really, really easy. But I want you to know, one of the reasons that I love Creative Fabrica, they're offering a all access subscription for just $4.99 a month and that's going to be billed at $59.98 for a full year. That's such a good deal, it's half the price of Cricut Design Space and you get so many more files, so many more fonts, so many more options to design with than you get with Cricut Design Space. Now if you're not sure that you want to sign up, I'm going to be able to give you a free trial with 10 free downloads so you can check out the website, test out the files, and see what you think. I'm going to show you in this video how easy it is to download their fonts and use them with Design Space to create this rug. For this project, all you're going to need is some sort of map. This one was already a rainbow, but I added the hello. You're also going to need some acrylic paint in whatever color you want to use and a clear sealer spray. I like to use the Krylon Triple Thick Clear Spray and I use it in the mat for my doormats. That way it's not all glossy looking, but that way it's going to keep your mat looking great for years to come. You're also going to want to use some permanent vinyl for this or I've also used wax paper in previous videos. You can also use all sorts of other things, whatever works best for you, but I like to use permanent vinyl or wax paper to do these stencils. It's so fun, so easy. Let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. So over in Creative Fabrica, which you can sign up for a free trial at the link down below, and I will also link so that you can get this yearly access for $4.99 a month. This is billed at $59 a year, but normally it would cost you $348 a year, so it's a really great deal. But what's great about it is that it includes pretty much the entire site. So let's say you know that you don't have a font that's quite what you're looking for, but you can easily come in here and find something that is what you're looking for. So I'm going to go into my fonts and I'm going to choose script fonts because I know I want to use something in the script font world. And I think honestly, like I like this Kayla one. I do think that's a fun font. And what's fun is a lot of them will have this option here to type in your saying, and then you can see what it looks like. So you can see here, I this is kind of what I'm going for, honestly, but I don't want the outline and I know they have one that isn't an outline. So let's scroll through the fonts and just take a look at some of the other options, but you can see there are so many different styles. This is the one I'm thinking of. It's basically the same font. It's just not, um, like uh, an outline of it. So this will probably be the one that we use, but let's scroll through, take a look. I really like the style of this one and oddly enough it is called Hello and I think I have that font. Let's look. I do, it's right here. So what's cool about this is like, I didn't even like notice that one, but it's perfect. Like that's kind of what I'm looking for is something in that style. So if you find something like that, that's cool. But let's look through a little bit more. Just see if there's anything else that kind of stands out to me as maybe something I would really like to use on this doormat. So far, I'm really liking Hello and Kayla, but there are a lot of different options. And honestly, you could scroll for days and find so many wonderful fonts. They have everything from sand script, script fonts, uh, handwritten, all sorts of really, really nice fonts. I love this sunflower one as well. So let's look at this one and see what this one looks like with the word hello, because I want to see if maybe that's kind of the vibe or if we're still going to stick with kind of what we were thinking with either Kayla or with the hello font. I don't think I like that. So let's go back. We're going to download that filled in Kayla and I can show you how to install a font because it's super easy and I know a lot of people struggle with it. So when you find the font that you wanna use, which we're gonna use this filled in Kayla, we're gonna select it and it's, it's so simple. Click download and it's gonna ask you where you want to download. So I do have a folder that is specific just for my fonts and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. From here, it's going to have a little download down in the bottom of my internet browser. I'm gonna click that folder. Now this is a zipped folder, so you need to extract the 
information from it. So click extract all and then just click extract. It's going to open up your folder with your extracted fonts. You want to install the open type font and you're going to right click on it and you're going to click install for all users. That's going to make it so that you can use it for all of your different programs. Now I already have this installed so I'm not going to uh, replace it but I do already have that font installed I did not remember. But that's a good way to kind of teach you how to install fonts. It's very easy. Now, if you have not um, already done so, you'll need to close your design space and reopen it or just don't have design space open when you install fonts. Let's head over to design space and we can put input our text. So I'm going to just input that text and it's just going to be hello. And we want to go to our font selection and under system, you can just type in Kayla and there is your Kayla font. Go ahead and select that and now your hello is ready to go. Now you'll notice that there were some parts and things with that font that you can absolutely access using a font manager. The font manager that I like to use is HiLogic main type. I'll link it down below. Fantastic font manager. So what I'm going to do is scroll down. They're all alphabetical and I'm going to scroll down to Kayla. And I'm going to select that font over here in this main section. So you'll see over here that this is our Kayla font that we're using. But if you scroll down a little bit, what you'll see is you'll find these extra glyphs that have like fancy swirls on them or the H with the heart that we're looking for. What you want to do to get this over to your Cricut design space is right click on it. And you want to copy it to your clipboard. Then head back over to Cricut Design Space and you want to select your font and edit it. So I'm going to get rid of this H. You need to use Control V to paste the correct H in. If you're on a Mac, it is Command V and that should work just fine. So this is kind of what our little hello is going to look like on our doormat. Now, I will say I feel like the L's are just a little bit close together. So I'm going to do an advanced and I'm going to ungroup to letters really quick. And I'm just going to see if I can move that L over just a touch without it looking too weird. I just think they were a little close together and it just was too close for my taste. I'm pretty happy with the way everything's sitting, so I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go to combine and I'm going to weld. Now, I'm not going to change this in any way, so I'm not worried about welding it. This is just going to be for this one design that we're using. Now, I do want to make sure to save this because I just don't want it to get messed up. So I'm going to call this rainbow doormat and I'm going to save it and then we will resize it here in just a second. So our mat is pretty large, so we can really make this very, very big. Our mat, I can definitely do up to probably 27 inches, but that's a little too big for the design on the mat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about 20 inches, and I think that that's going to be a good size for the mat that we want to do. Now, again, you can really kind of base it on however big you want to make it. I might make a little bit bigger. I think 21 inches. Now, what's great about this is we're going to cut this just on the regular Cricut. It's going to fit just fine, but we are going to use the 12 by 24 mat. Now, if you have a Cricut Maker 3, you can cut without the mat using smart materials. But for this one, we're just going to use regular vinyl. It's going to work just fine. This is going to be really fun. We're going to actually do this with acrylic paint and some Flex Seal spray to keep it nice and colorful throughout the years. Now we don't need to mirror this or anything. We don't need to do anything special here. We've welded and it's good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click make it so that you can see it's going to show us a big 12 by 24 mat. So it just asks if we wanna make sure that we wanna use that mat, which we do. And you can see your design on the mat. Now for this, I like to move it over a little bit more towards the center of the mat to give us a little bit of extra vinyl at the top and at the bottom here. And then I also like to pull it down just a little bit so that we have some vinyl at the end as well, just to kind of give us some space while we're stenciling. Now, because we're just using StarCraft HD for this, all we simply need to do is cut this on the vinyl setting and it's good to go. Let's head over to the machine and get this cut. We're ready to cut out the really long stencil for our design here. So what I do is this is a 24 inch mat and I'm sorry, it keeps shaking you. It's hitting the little uh, cord that's attached. But 
what I do is I put it under my mat. I do this like I do when I'm doing smaller designs as well, but I find that this works really well when you are using like a big long mat and a whole roll. So this is a 10 yard roll of the StarCraft HD, which is what we're gonna be using today. So what I do is I put that roll onto my Cricut and then you can see my mat here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up. Now, this is not cut super straight from my last cut. So I'm gonna just try to line it up best I can with the sides of the mat and see if I can get it to go relatively straight. If it's not perfectly straight, I'm not super worried because I did move it down a little bit. But once I get it pretty well on there, I just kind of roll the roll away from it and then I just put the rest of the vinyl on. Now, like I said, is it perfectly straight? No, but is it okay? It's fine. It's gonna cut the vinyl just fine. So I leave my roll attached. It's way back here, you can't see it. And then from back here, I'm holding my mat. You can kind of see how it's moving. I'm gonna load my mat in and then I'm gonna keep holding my roll back here because I don't have a lot of space. This is on like a kind of a, like a less large table. I'm going to go ahead and let this cut while I'm holding the roll out at the end. Once it's done cutting, I'll show you how we're going to weave this and then we can apply it to our mat. Now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and roll the roll back up a little bit. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but just trust me. I'm just rolling the roll up a little more so that I'm not like with a bunch of excess vinyl. I'm gonna go ahead and unload the mat. And then for this, I'm gonna go ahead and slide the machine out of the way so that you can see a little bit better. Um, but I do like to not cut when I'm doing a stencil. I don't like to cut it right against the edge of the stencil. I like to give myself a little extra room. So my stencil ends right here, but I'm gonna cut it down here a little bit. And I'm just gonna put a little slit in the vinyl and then I'm gonna flip it over because this is a roll. So I wanna try to keep it straight. So I'll usually just cut it as straight as I can on like the next line down from where I cut the slit. Cause I just don't care if it's a little bit too big, especially with a stencil, you want that little extra edge so that you don't get like paint somewhere that you don't want it. The next thing I'm gonna do is unload this from the mat. This mat is crazy sticky. So I'm gonna be very careful unloading it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is flip it over. So it's on the back side, and you'll see that my vinyl hangs out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it back a little bit, and then just with my hand, I'm gonna help hold my vinyl down as I roll my design back, like my mat back off of the design, because otherwise I'm gonna end up with really curly vinyl, and I definitely don't want that, but this mat was like brand new, so it is crazy sticky, and I, can, oh, I cannot even. It was so hard to get the little mat cover off, so now I wanna put the mat cover back on and I know that this can be kind of a pain. So what I do is I hold it way up in the air and then I line up the hole where like the hanger hole is and then I just lay this down. And as long as it's covering 90% of my mat, I'm fine with it. If there's a little corner not covered, it'll be okay. Now what we need to do is to weed this. Now I'm pretty sure this uh, vinyl has the white backing because this is an older roll from back in the day before they um, had the blue backing. So I'm gonna go ahead and weed this, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually weed out the letters. Yes, this does have the white backing, so it's gonna be hard for you to see it, but I'm just gonna weed out the letters. And by doing so, it's gonna create that stencil that I need. You wanna make sure the centers of your letters all stay intact because you are going to need those for your stenciling. Now it is important to make sure that you do weed this in the correct way is obviously if you don't, it's not gonna work and you won't have a stencil. You'll end up with like a weird design that just isn't quite what you're looking for. So let me get this heart out of here. And we are all weeded. This was really easy to weed. I don't know how well you guys can really see that. Um, Cause like I said, this is an older uh, roll. So this doesn't have the blue backing, but the vinyl has blue backing now but if I move it a little bit, oh there, you can see it a little better like this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna put transfer tape on this and then we're gonna get it stuck to the uh, doormat. We need to put transfer tape onto our giant decal here, but because this is not gonna wanna stick amazing to the mat, because obviously it's like textured, it's a core mat, we're going to take transfer tape and I'm, I'm gonna do this part quickly because it's fairly loud but I'm gonna roll it out so it's as big as the decal and I'm gonna stick to my table a couple times. Wow. 
once I have it rolled out, I'm just gonna trim it off. And then I wanna stick it to my table, to your shirt, to your pants, to whatever you got to make it just a little bit less sticky. If it sticks to itself, that's okay too, but you just wanna de-stick it a bit because if it's too sticky, it's gonna be really, really hard to get it to uh, adhere to your mat. So it's kind of like when I do um, stuff with screen printing, same idea. You just wanna make sure your, your transfer tape isn't crazy sticky. So I've stuck it down a few times. It's probably not super sticky, but you can also just take your hand and stick it all over your transfer tape. That will help you stick it a little bit to the natural oils and stuff from your hands. So this is another option. I'm sorry, I know that noise is crazy annoying. So once I've done that, and I'm pretty happy with how unsticky it is, and I'm just using medium tack, what I'm gonna do now is place my decal down onto my transfer tape. Now I'm just eyeballing this. Um, you do it how you want, but I like to just eyeball, and I'm just sort of gonna set it down. If it's not perfectly centered, it's fine. I'm not worried about it. But you can see here, it's on there. You can see some of the hairs from where I stuck it to my table. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my squeegee, and I like to do the larger ones from the front, and you're gonna hear some of those bubbles being released from the transfer tape. So some of that noise is just bubbles. But you wanna make sure that you kinda of get all over. And I know I keep bonking that wire that you guys are stuck to. So your guys are shaking a bit through this video. Um, but this is kind of a big piece and you guys, the wire kind of hangs close. So I'm just gonna keep kind of just making sure, and it's okay if you have some wrinkling in here, don't worry about it. It's not gonna really transfer over to your mat. Now once I'm happy with that, I think I'm good. I'm just gonna check and make sure it looks like it's gonna come off of here pretty easy. Looks like it's gonna do really well. So I'm gonna get the mat and we are gonna be ready to put our stencil on to our adorable little rainbow doormat. We are gonna use this fun rainbow mat. I got this at Aldi for like $2 and it just kinda needs something. So we are gonna add our hello to it. Now this part, I will not lie to you, is going to probably frustrate you. It is going to make you want to scream, but it will be worth it in the end. So what I need to do is to get this design onto this very rough mat. So what I find works really well for me is to just go slow, take my time. So this is gonna be something that you'll wanna really just take your time with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the backing off of my design here. And I wanna go slow with this because I do wanna make sure that all of the pieces stay down. Being that this is a larger design, I don't think we're gonna have any issues, but I do always just like to take my time just in case. All right, looks like we're good. We just got the O and that little curly and we're off. So now what I want you to do, I don't want you to put this down face down just yet. I want you to figure out where it's going to sit first because you don't wanna get the core matte stuff on to the vinyl just yet. So I always sort of hold it over it, kind of get a good look at where I want it to sit. I generally already knew where I wanted it. So once you've decided where it goes, set it down. This is going to be, like I said, pretty frustrating, pretty annoying, pretty hard to get to stay on your mat, but don't worry, it's totally worth it in the end. And the beautiful part is, you don't even have to really get it all the way off of your transfer tape because I'm just gonna get the transfer tape to like here and call it a good day. So now what I want you to do is to take your squeegee and I want you to go ahead and burnish this. It's really not probably gonna do a whole lot, but I do want to just give it a quick little rub. You don't have to do too much to it, but you do wanna give it a little rub. And then I like to just make sure that I've rubbed those little insides of my letters just to see if I can help them stay down. This part, like I said, is going to be a little frustrating. It's going to take some patience, a little bit of love. But what I do is I start at one corner and you'll see that it's going to want to come up. That's fine. It's not really meant to stick to this. This is a very rough material. 
And there are lots of ways to do mats. I see people do them with wax paper. I've done them with stencils. I've done all sorts of different ways that I make mats, but I wanted to do this one with permanent vinyl because this is another option. So if this is not something that you wanna try, that's okay. You can do this with other materials. So just because I'm using vinyl doesn't mean you have to if you don't want to. So now what you're gonna see is like, I'm gonna hold down the parts of the design just to help them stay in place. So I just wanna kind of work at one piece at a time. So I'm just going to kind of help all the pieces stay down. So like the center of this O wants to kind of come up because it is small, that's okay, no biggie, we got it. And then we wanna go for the section here with the L. Now one thing I'm gonna tell you is it really helps if you use your whole entire arm and just sort of help it kind of hold everything down. I'm just using the pressure of my hand on the vinyl to really help hold everything down. And we'll go right back over this with our hands just to make sure that we don't have a lot of bubbles and everything's generally staying down. It's never gonna stick completely. That's just the nature of the mat because it is such a rough surface. But like I said, this part's gonna test your patience. It's gonna make you wanna scream a little bit. You're just going to need to kind of work with it. And you can see as I'm going, I'm just sort of coming back, pressing this down, making sure that it's staying held down, even down here at the bottom where it keeps wanting to lift. So again, I'm just gonna use my hand to help guide the, the vinyl to stay down. And I'm just using my hand. And then you'll see again that the center really wants to come up. That's okay, it's going to try because it's not got a lot of surface to stick to. Now you'll notice that that whole thing just came up because I wasn't holding it down very well. I'm not gonna make you watch me talk through this whole thing, just watch. I am gonna speed it up a little bit so that you're not stuck watching this whole thing. But like I said, just make sure that you're going really slow. And like if you find that you have too much transfer tape and you're just running out of extra control, you can easily just trim this off to give you a little more control with your transfer tape. It can also help to come through every once in a while and just repress down the backing, like over here where you haven't pulled yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my time, get all this off, and then we're gonna be ready to all of the stencil and I'm using my hand and I'm just sort of trying to smooth out any like big wrinkles or anything like that that might cause some issues. I think we look pretty well stuck. So once you're happy with how well your vinyl is down and you're going to want to be very careful with this because this is not something that you want to do haphazardly. You don't want to go in and brush this on you wanna use stencil brushes. So I have a larger one and a smaller one here that we're going to use to stencil our design. Now, because I have this big open space over here, I'm just gonna use that to put my acrylic paint on and I'm just going to kind of squeeze out a little bit. I don't need a lot, just a little. And I'm gonna start with the big boy and I'm just gonna gently dab it and that's way too much paint. You want a drier brush for this. So you just dab your paint off of it a little bit and then I just want you to go in and you're gonna go in an up and down gentle motion. And remember this is done with light layers. So we can go back in, get a little more paint and you wanna take the paint that you dabbed off and use that to dab your next section. So you just kind of go through and light taps. I'm not hitting it like really hard. I'm moving in and light and you can see it's done with very light layers. I'm not gonna go in and do like a huge dump of paint. So that's what you wanna do all the way around. And I have the smaller one just in case we need it, but I don't think we're going to. And you can actually hold your vinyl down if it's trying to move at all, but this is just the way to do it. You just gently, tap your way around and like I said you can definitely use the smaller brush if you want to in the smaller areas but you can see that my layers are going to be pretty light and I'm going to do several layers so I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me dab this all in real time because that would take forever and you guys would be bored out of your minds so I am going to go ahead and do this quickly and you'll see that I'm going to do multiple layers 
I'm gonna let one layer dry and then I'll come in and do the next layer and then I'll do the next layer. So you're gonna see that we will have several layers for this, but do not worry, it's gonna come out so cute when you're done. Once you've covered it, what I want you to do is allow this to dry completely. So I'm just gonna leave this guy overnight and we'll come back and deal with it later. Now, because this is acrylic paint, you can absolutely wash out your brushes to save them. This poor little guy, uh, he has seen better days, but I think with the right drying, he'll be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry overnight and then we're gonna be able to come back, peel off our design, and then we're gonna seal the mat as well to make sure that this really lasts a long time. I've let this dry overnight so we can now take the vinyl off and pray that this came out really cute. And the vinyl should come off super easy since it really didn't stick very well. Oh, I think it's gonna be real cute. And then you wanna get the centers of your letters off. And what's nice about using the acrylic paint is that it doesn't have to come off while it's still wet. The acrylic paint isn't going to lift off of this. But oh my gosh, I'm obsessed like this came out even cuter than I had imagined I think it is absolutely perfection now we are going to seal this to make sure that it keeps the acrylic paint really nice and neat and clean we're going to be using some clear spray for this in a satin so I'm going to take you guys outside and get this all sprayed off and show you how to do that when sealing your mat, you want to do this in a well-ventilated area, and I'm using this Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Clear in Satin. Now, one thing I want you to note is that when you are spraying this, you want to spray it from several different angles. That way, it really gets into the mat and all around the mat. Now, I made sure to seal the entire mat. That way, the rainbow part didn't come off either, but you can see I spray it from the front, and then you can't really see, but I am spraying it from the back. I let them, those two like coats dry for about an hour and then I'm gonna come back in and spray it again. Now again, you can't see me, but I am spraying it from the sides as well just to make sure it's getting all over the acrylic as well as the rainbow paint because that can wear off when you buy these mats as well. Now I definitely love using this Rust-Oleum Clear Spray. It works fantastic. You can find it at Home Depot and I will link it down below for you. This little can lasts forever. It's fantastic and it really looks great on the mat. It doesn't give it that shiny appearance. The mat really doesn't change at all since I did use the satin. I let the spray dry for about a full 24 hours just to be sure that it was good to go. And here's our final product. Now, don't forget that you can sign up with Creative Fabrica with a free trial at the link down below, or you can just get all access for $4.99 a month. I absolutely love it. They have so many fun options, so many cool things to check out. So be sure to sign up. All the links for everything we used and where to find Creative Fabrica are in the video's description. I hope you all have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.